Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome back to another episode while Dana beautifies herself. Uh, <laughs> this is real life. We just go keep it real. And it actually goes with the topic we talk about. So act like you don't see her. Okay? <laughs> All right, so we have a really, really good topic tonight. All our topics be good, but sometimes they speak to us more than <laughs> we're probably talking to ourselves a lot of time because we just we just love it. Dana with her nasty strawberry bananas. <laughs> if you like bananas, tell me in the comments. Bananas are delicious, aren't we they? We can't be friends. If y'all say y'all like bananas, we doing. I can eat bananas, just not drink them and they don't want the candy and mm -mm. give me all the bananas. Look, buy instead of buy Felicia, buy Tamika. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing that. Okay, so if you missed last week's episode, go and check that out. Even go check out the last one for February. I think that was a really, really dope conversation. We talked a little bit about history. We closed out Black History Month with an unsung hero. Unfortunately, in the Detroit metro area, no. <laughs> but in, la in, in last episode, we talked about um, being inspiring and such. So if you missed any of those episodes, we will drop. You can go and find them on any of the three of ours pages, or you can just do it real quick and easy. Click the YouTube link. Go and see them from intro to where we are now. So, y'all. We've been through some trying times over this last, what, two, are we two years gone now? Two and a half years gone now, whatever it is. And we've had to make some loopsy loops and some changes. And what we're going to talk about tonight is relevant, not just from all the things that we had to do. It's relevant now. It's relevant always. We are talking about pivoting. When is it? appropriate, if you will, to pivot in your business? Will you have to pivot in your business? Have you pivoted in your business? What does it look like? We're going to talk about it all because I think it can be one of those scary things that just happens in business that can cause us to sink or swim, right? We can be very, very fearful of any kind of change. It can you can implement this into your life as well. So we're going to talk about pivot, pivoting within your business. And I'm going to kick it off. I want to just start off with the drama. We're going to have drama this Wednesday evening. I'm about to say afternoon, y'all. This Wednesday evening. So I want to ask you, ladies, do you think that pivoting has to happen at a specific time like is there a such thing as pivoting too late or too early when it comes to your business i think so i didn't change so many times people probably don't know what i do <laughs> <laughs> i didn't pivot here i pivoted over there yeah and i i did it too soon instead of just filling out what my strengths were and so I had to go back, relaunch, go back again, relaunch again. And it, yeah. So I believe you can do it too early or too late. Whenever, if you feel like you need to let your business go, I think, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> Man, you know, you run it out. Um, so to, I actually like that point. And that's actually where I was going to start with. Um, I think some people, they don't pivot, they jerk. They're like, oh, they, we into this now. We, I'm like, wait a minute. You ain't even had a, you ain't even have a <laughs> to pivot to, to move around. Like, wait a minute. Um, because seriously, I do feel like we live in a, um, instant gratification society, right? We live mm -hmm. in this popcorn world where we want to press start and it is manifested. Yeah. Right? Right. And so, as a result, I think sometimes people are pivoting before they even realize mm -hmm. how, how it needed to actually grow and do what it needed to do. 
Um, with that said, oh, is that me, Emily? Is that better? Is that I don't. Better? I don't hear an echo. Let us know if you hear an echo, y'all. Okay. Okay. I think. I think. I feel like I can hear it. Can you hear an echo now? Okay, I think that's better. Okay, y'all. Okay, sorry, y'all. Technical due to technical difficulties. Dana is having some technical difficulties, y'all. Uh, anywho, um, yeah. So when it comes to like pivoting too fast, I feel like. Um, keep this in mind, and I've said it before, right? Businesses generally fail for the first five years and a lot of times don't even turn a profit till 10, okay? And so I think so many times people have these visions and they have these ideas and they have these dreams and they want to do all of these big, great things, but they don't give stuff enough time before they start making adjustments, pivoting, moving it all over. And I, I guess I'm in a more long way kind of ironing out exactly what Adriana said, because then what happens is people get confused. And then once they get confused, then they're like, here she goes again, because yesterday she was an esthetician. And then now today she's writing books. And then now, <laughs> later, can y'all tell I'm talking about myself? Um, like, and so then they're like, I don't understand where to follow and how, right? And so I do think there's times where people pivot way too soon and they haven't even developed it. But I will say this, give yourself the skills, right? So if it's a business and you know nothing about business, baby, just because you feel like that's the way you need to go, you probably need to get a mentor. You probably need to get a coach. You probably need to um, get some education behind your belt because you want to actually be successful. So it might not be that your dream or your vision or what you have isn't sufficient, but it might be that maybe you actually need funding for the big aspirations that you have and taking it out of your 401k is not going to manifest exactly what you need to do, right? When there's grants out there that can be done, when there's micro loans that you can get out there. So I do think that there's times that people pivot and move around, but they do it too soon because they don't have the foreknowledge or they haven't educated themselves in that space. Um, so take the time to do that first. So would you say that there is a, and I asked this question not to say that we're like know it all and we hold it within our hands and these are like exact numbers, but would you ladies say that there is a formula or a perfect right number that you should give any like new strategy you're implementing, new service, new product? Like, is there like a give it three months, like give, give it a quarter, give it 90 days? You know what I'm saying? Like, is there a time that you would say either from personal experience or just you know, a good safe space that people can work within before they're just like, all right, I'm pushing the pivoting button. Obviously, some things are going to be more major if you're talking about completely throwing away your whole business versus just changing a strategy, that time may be different. But for the smaller things where we pivot a lot within our businesses, would you say there is a, a right time or would you have a suggestion for um, amount of time people should give uh, um, like I said, a product or a system or a service or, or something time to work to see if it is worth pivoting. Uh, I love your face, Adriana. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm the wrong person to ask, but honestly, I, I say 10 years. <laughs> so, um, but Here's the thing that I will say before you even get to like, um, this is my business or this is what I want to do or this is my dream. I would say that you need to have a destination and I don't feel like the destination ever changes. Now, are there times where how you get to that destination changes? Absolutely. OK, so for me, realistically, when I look at my entrepreneurship journey, my destination um, encompasses my family traveling and being able to be in a position to not worry about certain things, right? So as a result, there might be times where this was flowing really great 
And so this was what was fueling that position to get me there. Okay. I'm going to get more specific just so you can visualize what I'm saying. So I do believe that you should not <laughs> build multiple things until you've gotten really, really good at one and it's moving on its own, whether you're there or not. Okay. So for me, right, I have a branded, um, my oily like swag. Okay. That's not something that I necessarily actually promote. I wear my stuff out. If someone asks me about it, it's on my website. You can purchase. It's easily accessible and there to find. But you will not find me having a social platform just strictly on that. And if it comes into conversation, it's just something that got through in with everything else. The reason being is because there's other pieces of my business that are more prominent and I haven't gotten great at that yet, right? Even I will say in my young living business, I'm not where I would like to be. And because that is a vehicle that I'm using to get to my destination that is not fully operating on its own, it still needs quite a bit of my attention, right? And so I'm not going to pivot away from that business because at this point now, I've probably only been doing that portion of the business, maybe six or seven years. Okay. And I ain't got to my 10 year mark. So just that reason, and it's still growing. So another metric that I'll just put out there is growth. And you can measure growth depending on how you want to measure growth. I don't necessarily measure growth uh, on a linear level because I understand business, right? So sometimes people are like, well, I, and I'll just use Young Living terms because a lot of people on here are Young Living. Well, I didn't move from executive to silver to silver to gold. And so I'm not having growth. Whereas my pushback to that is even though you might be still consistently at a certain level, you might very well have still had growth because there's growing pains in business, right? So there might be things that you learned as a leader that is going to be what you need once you get more of that growth. And you might have, unfortunately, needed five years of development and growth and education in that space before you could get to that next level. So you're still getting growth. It's just not linear or going and elevating the way you think that it should go. And so to me, I believe personally, like focus, get really good, let it ride on its own. Once that one's flowing, go to the next one, okay? So I use all of my tools in my arsenal because, hello, if I'm going to make more money, like I might as well add to the pot. But I really, really, really think that that's not a pivot. <laughs> that is just understanding where and establishing where you are. Now, there are times when you do need to pivot, which we'll come back to, <laughs> but um, these aren't those moments just because it's not going in a linear fashion the way you think or want it to. And I think to add to that too, um, just specifics, uh, specifically to what Dana was saying there, I understand too, that just because it's not going the way that you want, it could be because you've not set a direction for yourself at all. And you're just kind of like, you know, speaking in young living terms, because like Dana said, there's a lot of us here, but you're just like, oh, this is where I want to go. And I'm just going to do all of the things at one time. Dana talked about it. And I believe it was specifically when we, um, I don't know the episode number, but it was uh, business ADHD. Get really good at that one thing. Like if, you've, if you're in a service-based business, you know, get really good at offering one thing. Like you're a life coach or something and you have a product, like do your one thing and then get really good with that. And then have a second and third one or whether you could buddy bump it up to Young living folks, you know, get really good. The idea that you're using all 500 products that Young Living has is, you know, absurd. Yes, I'm sure we all use several hundred maybe or even a hundred, but you can't share about all the things because you can't possibly know. So get really comfortable, really good with, you know, five of them, two of them, one of them. And you talk about those things, like Dana said, I, I love it. And I, I believe it was business ADHD. Get good at 
that one that one thing. Get really good and have goals, have a direction. Because if you're finding yourself like, I'm done, or oh, I'm gonna scrap this idea because there was no end game in sight, you had no, you hadn't you you just have a vehicle and you're just driving. Well, eventually you're going to run out of gas <laughs> and you're going to be like, is it worth pulling over and getting more and keep going? Or should we just turn back and call it quits? But if you don't have goals in mind, directions in mind, you're going to feel that a lot. Personal experience. <laughs> For me, I could say that um, in my current business, I didn't even think about doing birth doula things. I, I didn't want to niche down. I was like, nah, I ain't going to worry about it. I was always interested in it, but I didn't become a doula until two and a half years ago. And before then, I was then learning about essential oils, but then leveraging oils and supplements and then labor and delivery together. I was like, hmm, maybe this could be something. But like both of y'all have said, get something, do something, and then like hone in on that one thing. And I feel like, like you just said, Tamika, just get good at one product or one uh, supplement or oil or whatever. Well, I didn't think like that. And so I would just try to throw it all at my clients and they'd be like, oh my gosh, girl, all I want you to do is be there for my labor and delivery. I don't need all of this stuff. And so that's why I would have to come in and pivot and I'm thinking like, okay, yeah, I have this vision of where I want to go, but I'm steady turning around and making you turns and just unsure of where to go and just how to leverage everything. I think that's where that network comes in it because I just try to throw everything at them <laughs> and they don't get it. And then like it hurt my feelings one time. One of my good friends was like, what is it that you actually do? What 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 do you do? I know you do the birth thing. I know you have this, but what is it that you do? And I looked at her like, girl, that's a good question. I don't know what to start explaining what I do. <laughs> so um, to your point, uh, shucks, I'm, I'm confused. We all confused over here. Just know that you can use oils and supplements when you're pregnant, okay? <laughs> That's what I tell people. So we talked about this with Andrean specifically I, in, in another episode, and do not make me lie, but I know we talked about, you know, just you in general being hesitant to share what it is that you're exactly doing. So I don't know if that's so much you pivoted or just you not being clear because of any kind of fear of not wanting to say, look, this is what I do. But that in mind, and I know Dana kind of touched on it, when... When do you pivot in your business? When there, when are there times that you will see inevitable pivots, um, especially within the world that we live? Let's talk about those and drop in the comments. What has been a time that you've had to pivot? Are you in a pivot season right now? So let's get to those. What are the times in your business that you may have to pivot? Yeah, and here's the thing. I... I feel like sometimes there's outside sources that you have no other option but to pivot. And so I know when we were talking about this one that I brought up and it's it's crazy because it actually then stemmed to a portion of why I teach and educate even with young living the way that I do. And for me, for those that don't know my story or do and you're just going to hear it again because that's what it is. Um, I am I am a, a licensed esthetician. I do not practice, but I keep my licenses up. And I, for a long period of time, worked in spas and salons, and I even owned my own spa. Um, when I got pregnant with my son, um, I had a very very rough pregnancy, and at the time I was working at a spa and. I, I went to what was supposed to just be a simple ultrasound um, that turned into you're going actually right, right from here to the hospital. You're going to have surgery in the morning. And it, I, like, I was like, can I even go home to get it to go back? And they're like, no, your husband can bring you back whatever you need. You need to go right now. And so as a result, after that surgery, I was put on bed rest 
and they were like, you are going to be on bed rest for the next five months. Um, as an esthetician, and if you are in the beauty industry, light it up in the comments, let me know. And if this is not true, <laughs> right? If you don't touch people, you don't make money. And where we were even in our financial space at that time, not only did I need every single penny that I was making as an esthetician, but I, I was not prepared to not work for five months, right? I was not in a position where I could even make that work. Um, so as a result, I had to pivot, right? I had to make different decisions because there was no way from my end that I would still be able to um, administer the skills that I get paid for. And so maybe for you as well, you're in a position where you're like, I, maybe you are like in the, we'll, we'll say you're a hairstylist and you're like, I am getting carpal tunnel. I am in a situation where my back is messed up. Like I love my clients. I love what I do, but I might need to pivot because I can't sustain this for another 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Right. So I need to make a pivot or you might be in a position where your industry don't make sense no more. Okay. So if you still are only blockbuster, right? Like that, that it's not a thing, right? So pivot, move, baby, move. Okay. Like there's legitimate baselines for certain things and there's stuff that can be nostalgia and everything like that. But if your industry don't make sense, stop trying to beat a dead horse that is dead. Nobody in the industry, like nobody wants it anymore because now we have advanced past dinosaurs. Okay. So like that might be a red flag, like, hey, it's time to pivot. It's time to move. It's, it's time to either up our game or do something different. Uh, and, and I will just add this last little tidbit. I, I fight a lot <laughs> with clients that I have from the marketing standpoint and social media where they're like, well, I don't like Facebook. Well, great. But you have a business. So there's still portions of the tools that Facebook has that if you have a business, like, you need to have, I'm not saying you need to post every day on Facebook. I don't, I, you don't even need to show up on Facebook, but if you're not using business suite to tie to your Instagram, like you're working way too hard. Right. And if you don't know what business suite is again, like you need to pivot <laughs> move because you're missing out on certain things, being a dinosaur back here, trying to do stuff because it's just what you're comfortable with and what you're used to. It might be time to pivot. It might be time to make a change. I love all of that. I think um, this is a hard, I want this a hard topic for me, but this is one of these topics that I'm like, I'm, I'm, you, I'm what is it? No, unusually quiet, but it's only because I am one of those people that for better or for worse, I'm going to see th think things through until it like breaks me <laughs> because it's like, you can see the, like Dana said, I have that, I have that end goal that, that this is where I'm going in mind. And it's like, I know this can work. I know this can work. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And I can hold on to things until like, it's a thread, like throw it away, girl. <laughs> like just get rid of it. Um, another pivot I'm going to speak to any of my military spouses out there. See girl. Um, I was crazily at the beginning of my young living business was overseas. And we went from England to Germany and their legalities with all the things are very different. And so I was this like doe-eyed onto yes, I'm going to start this. I'm so excited to help other moms because at the time, the way I was running my business was completely surrounded around my youngest and just having a new baby and not sleeping. And so that's how I was presenting. So I was like, I'm so excited to reach other moms. Like being overseas is a very unique experience because it's like your own little America in whatever location you are and you get to reach all these moms. So I was really excited. And then we got to Germany and I'm like ready to host every event at my house. I was ready to make peppermint brownies, y'all, and lavender lemonade. Like I was on it, honey. And then I got hit with like, oh, in order for Americans to run a business, you got to go, you got to pay German taxes. You got to go file, get a, a license. And so I am somebody that plays by the rules. I don't play with the IRS. I don't play with Popo. None of that. So I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do the right thing. So I went and got my business license. But it didn't make sense because 
then it was just like, so much was going on. I didn't want to run things illegally because my husband had a line number and it's not worth that's it. military spouses. Y'all know we don't play with that either. So I was just like, well, what can I do? It's not making sense. I'm my overhead doing it the legal way is killing me and it's not making sense and it's crushing my spirits and it's too early in the game for this. So I pivoted because I wasn't going to give this up because what it what wasn't about the money uh, yes, I wanted to make money. I wanted to grow my business, but I had such a belief in how one oil lavender, I changed my life and my family's life in a matter of nine hours of sleep. I wasn't ready to give it up. So I pivoted and was like, you know, this is how I'm going to run my business. I'm just going to build a foundation. It's going to be a lot less. This goes back to our networking episode. It's going to be a whole lot more of building a community, networking, getting people to see this is what I'm about. And then when we leave this place, I will have already had that solid foundation. I have a community. I have that, you know, that that no like um, and trust factor. I'll be good to go. And then I can get into you know, this actual selling piece. So that was hard. And I pivoted a whole lot around that. But those will be sometimes the pivots that you'll have to go through. And from a business standpoint of like how I'm going to choose to run my business because of environmental or situational um misfortunes because it was I hated being in Germany so it made it worse but that's one of the things that I had to and that period also caused me to pivot in how I showed up in my business because of a another situation going on with myself so pivots can come in all different ways I feel like pivots are here to test us like how are we going to react how are we going to um, get through this this thing. And it made me see what was more important. Like, do you really want to run this business? Is this really what you want to do? Okay, then you're going to have to figure out another way to be legal, break no rules, <laughs> but not give it up. I want to add, since we just all into network marketing or social selling or whatever you want to call it, in pivoting, like from where you started eight years ago or six years ago, seven years ago with you, Tamika, do you see the change in our industry of how you had to pivot or have you had to pivot from when you first started up until now in how you approach people? <clears throat> I wasn't sure. You said, did, did you say Tamika or you're just asking both of us? Both of y'all. Okay, so I will say for me, um, it changed dramatically. Because, I mean, I do feel like there's levels of, I feel like me and Tamika had a similar thing where, well, let me just speak for myself. So for me, I already had a business, right? So I'm not looking to do another business in the beginning, right? What I found was I was desperate for healing for my son and I was tapped out, which this, woo, if you ever want to get under my skin, when you're having a conversation with me, tell me that oils are expensive or tell me that eating healthy or being healthy is more expensive than being sick. If you ever want to get under my skin, do that. Okay. If you want to stay on my good side, don't even let that come out your mouth because- Them fighting words. <laughs> right. For me. And only because I was on the other side of illness. And even with good insurance, the amount of money that I was coming out of pocket for medicines, for like all of these recommendations that the pediatrician and the doctor were telling me to do and stuff like that. Um, it was way more expensive than even. And I'll just put that out there. The, to me, if you are in Young Living, the minimum of a $300 order that you would do a month, okay? Like what I was out paying to try to find health for my son that the doctor was recommending me was way more than that, okay? So that's why I have a hard time when someone tells me health is expensive because I'm like, really? Because have you tried illness? Because I don't, I don't know how people are paying for medicines. I literally have no idea how you guys are working this out. Um, so for me, because that was my experience, 
I shared naturally what was working and I shared naturally my experiences. So as I'm sharing these things, people are attracted to what I am offering them. So there wasn't necessarily a connection of business. <laughs> so I had a lot of people in the beginning that I was excited. They were excited. They wanted to share because I was sharing, but I had no systems in place. And you asking me questions about leadership and this and the other. And I'm like, I don't know do what you want to do, right? So I got every like all these people that's like looking to me to lead them, guide them, show them some space. And I'm like, that ain't my job. I don't know what to tell you, right? And so whereas a few years down the line, I'm like, oh, it's my responsibility to help give you the resources. Even if I'm not the one that leads you, I should probably give you tools so that you know where to go to lead, right? So again, and I think this was in a previous episode that we talked about, right? Like I had to make a decision at some point because I wasn't the same person eight years ago as I was four years ago that I was. And so I definitely wasn't in a position to move this way in direction when it came to my business because there was all this stuff I needed to learn in between there, right? And so from that standpoint, I will definitely say I'm a completely different, I'm a, I'm a different person than I was six months ago, right? Like I run my business differently how, than how six months ago because I do use it in a similar way as a tool to support the rest of my business, my passions and things like that. And I teach my business people to do the same um, just because I was in a position where I didn't touch people, so I didn't make money. So I needed to pivot and I needed to understand that you should have something working for you, even if you're not working, right? Because you're the professional, if I recommend an oil to you and I've used it on you, you're going to trust my expertise just like you would a doctor, right? If a doctor prescribes you some medicine, you're gonna be like, okay, let me go get that medicine. Same thing as a professional in your business. If you are recommending something you believe in and that will impact and change somebody else, they're going to go with what you recommend because you're the professional and they look to you to give you those resources. Yes, all the finger snaps. I was muted so I couldn't do my little cheerleader thing. But <laughs> all of that, I think I think um, Dana like hit it square. It's, it's very similar, like she said. We have very, very, very similar stories. Um, and Dana took the word right out of my mouth. Like, absolutely. I don't know if Young Living's as a whole, as a business is different, but I am. Like how I come to it, how I step up to the plate, if you will, every day is very different. Um, when people ask me like, how long are you running your business? I've been with Young Living since 2016, like Andreana said, like seven years, it's ridiculous. But I feel like the better question is to say, like, how long have you seriously been running your business? Because of my pivot period, I had four years where I was doing foundational work. Yes, I won't lie to you that I didn't, I, I sat at my little desk in our little family sitting area, cornered off from the kitchen. And I was like, every post that I made was serious. I was like, I'm going to get 50 people to respond to me. And this time next year, I'm going to be Royal Crown Diamond. And like Dana said, I had all of this. Like I was like, let's go. Everybody come on. We're going to do all the things. But I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to lead those people. And had God been like, okay, boo, here you go. There's Royal Crown Diamond. It would have been a setup. It would have been a setup for an epic discussion on how you can be given everything and royally lose it because you messed up. You wasn't ready. So it's very different for me. I can agree. I was not ready to be in the position that I wanted to be in when I started this thing out. Like I was ready to be that unicorn story. But now that I'm not and I'm deeper in the game, I have nothing against all you unicorns out there that have like, I did this in six months and I make millions a month in six months. Click, click to you, bravo. But I'm glad I'm not, I'm not one of those people because there's just so much growth and learning that happens 
you know, being regular, regular, there's nothing wrong with being regular, right? Andriana said in a previous video, um, she's not special. There's nothing wrong with not being special. The majority of us are not special, right? We're just Tamika, we're just Dana, we're just Andriana. And that's okay, right? We're growing every single day. So I am absolutely different. Like Dana, even last month, you know, I'm, I'm different than I was in 2022. Like I feel that change and it probably has nothing to do with young living but it has everything to do with some of the pivots that i've gone through or the ways that i approach things or just aging right just aging with your business and and working it and you know having a pivot plan if you will or a pivot strategy when things don't go and i have i've run the gamut like i was exactly like dana said i was so excited i was ready to create a facebook page and a group and a I don't even know everything under the sun for everything. Like I had planned to never sleep. I planned to never eat. Like it was just going to be this thing. Um, so I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely different. And again, that probably has nothing to do with young living and more so to do with me. But like now I'm in the place where I can jump on the, do a live and say, look, Come join me in running this business. If you're looking to just make an extra hundred dollars a month, we can we can make it shake. And I'm here for it with you. And there are systems and tools in place to help you do that. If you want to be a unicorn story and go for millions a month, I'm a cheerleader for you over here. And I'm gonna be ready with all the adrenal support when you like, girl, this ain't it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna support you in all the ways. But it wouldn't have been like that back in 2016 or even if you say 2017 when i landed in germany and was hitting the road like it's so very different um for a lot of reasons and a lot of that is pivot seasons like a lot of pivot seasons that i'm that i'm thankful for strangely <laughs> i love that i love all of it um so pivoting um it, oh Lord, jesus sorry so pivoting i've had to do it several times like i've seen it um and just knowing when to pivot or when to let something go like that has been in the back of my mind like is this something that i really want to do so the evaluation period during the time of pivot has really become a big thing for me evaluating um my what we say ipas or my strategies or just things i have systems i have in place um causes me to pivot so yeah starting in 2017 I, I can tell you shoot i'm not the same person i was yesterday i don't know who she was mm, she different <laughs> so i mean i've had to pivot so much it's yeah that's all i'm saying but i love that so i think it's like what builds our characters right our, our business characters if you will so before we close out this evening i want to talk about something that funnily enough we haven't touched on it hasn't come up it's probably because you know you know how we like to talk y'all if you've been with us through any amount of episodes you know how we go <laughs> y'all know how we do but i still hear a lot of people are stuck in this post-pandemic business life COVID was a huge pivot for so many people. And Dana touched on it a little bit about, you know, social media, those being stuck as dinosaurs being like, I'm not going to this. I know personally, lots of people that tossed in the towel because there was just no way they were going on social media and going to be in Zooms and doing all these things because it just felt like too much, right? There's no way a business can survive in this manner. Well, here we are, 2023 and like everybody in some shape or fashion is running some kind of business, making some kind of money social media ways. But how do we get away from that? I would like to know in the comments, is there anybody struggling still now to get back to face to face or get back to a place where you want to get there because you've just become comfortable with that pivot of going completely social media online. I would love to hear if you're still struggling with that. And ladies, before we close out the night, do you have any tips, ways to get back? I know it is like going to be unique to everybody, but I feel like it is such still such a huge struggle. Um, and I want to close our evening with that. How do we get out of lockdown pivot? 
just do it. That's what I'm just about to say. Get out there, get off your butt and go. Cause that's that's my hold up. Yeah, I think this like what April and that yeah. I look at it like I have something to send out. It's just looking at me, I'm looking at it, we just looking at each other. <laughs> I just need to get out there and do it. So just go out there, do the dang thing. I, I, I will just add, if you feel resistance to something, it's probably something you need to lean into more, right? Because what happens is we naturally run from any pain and we go to pleasure, right? So naturally you have experienced something that keeps making you feel like I'm going to have this same reoccurring thing and it's going to hurt. And so that is the thing that as soon as you break through, you're going to get to your breakthrough. And that's the one thing that you are using to hold you back that it today, this episode, stop it. And then see what happens on the other side of that. Yes, we're going to leave it there, y'all. Send it on up because it was everything. It's on, yes, your breakthrough is on the, on the other side of that. Let it all go. Okay, you heard it here, Nike. We, we, we took your little saying, just do it. Ladies, get out there and do the thing. It's there, right? So y'all know what to do. Share this out there. Hit up the YouTube page. Turn on all your notifications. Go and follow us so that you don't miss another episode. And if you have, again, go check out the YouTube. It is there from start till we are where we are today. You can always catch that. And we will be back next Wednesday and every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central for another intriguing conversation. If there's anything that you would like for us to talk about, to tackle, or you would like to jump on here live with us and have a chat, we would love to have you reach out to any one of us or drop a comment in the comment section and we'll get it hooked up. Y'all enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Have an amazing week and we will see you guys next week.